And here's where you get to predict Jeff Begay's the future. <laughs> Too much pressure, Mark. Uh, what, what's your big prediction for see. the year ahead? Let me rub this thing. Um, your informed prediction. All right, my informed prediction. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, that's a little easier, I think. Um, crime is going down across the country. You wouldn't think that. Uh, based on what you hear in terms of uh, some of the crime out there. But uh, violent crime is down 13 uh, percent. The final numbers come out early next year. Uh, police officers across the country are understaffed, have managed to essentially get their arms around this problem. I predict that this trend will continue. <laughs> However, there are some, you know, bad areas. Carjackings are, they continue to yes. skyrocket. Why? And those, well, it's, uh, it's a good question. Uh, some people think that some of it is fueled by these pictures on social media, giving people ideas. Um, and then there, it's hard to catch people who are breaking into cars and, and theft, especially when you don't have enough cops on the street. Mm. You don't have cops walking the beats. Um, so that's a, a, a still a challenge for law enforcement, but in terms of violent crime, it is going down. Catherine? Well, mine's a little dark. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. Mm. This is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict. Um, there are a number of cons uh, concerns that I have that factor into that. Uh, not only this uh, sort of enduring heightened threat level that we're facing, uh, the wars in Israel, also Ukraine. And we're so divided in this country in ways that we haven't seen before. And I think that just creates fertile ground for our adversaries like North Korea, China, and Iran. And that's what uh, concerns me most. A lot of people up at night with that concern, mm -hmm. Catherine, at least in this town. Mm -hmm. Bob? Talking to my top Republican sources for months, I've been trying to get an answer to the question of what happens if former President Trump is convicted in a federal trial or in Georgia, but more likely in a federal trial before the Republican convention. Is there a plan B? Elected officials and campaign strategists, they say almost a refrain, no. So if Trump is the nominee, we're looking at a Republican convention this coming summer where there really is no plan to move to another candidate, the Republican Party, because of the way Trump has his fingerprints on everything, the state parties, the delegates are very much in his image politically, he could hold on to the nomination even if he's convicted of a federal crime. So my prediction is you might have a crisis inside the GOP come summer if Trump's a convicted felon, but still no real plan of how to handle that in a general election campaign. I, I predict that the Supreme Court is not going to save Donald Trump from a criminal trial. He, they are not going to rule that he is immune from criminal prosecution, and I don't think it's even going to be close. I, it could be 9-0 with the chief justice writing the opinion that a former president does not have absolute immunity from criminal prosecutions for actions they took while in office. And I think that the Supreme Court is also, my other prediction, is they are not going to say Donald Trump is disqualified uh, from running for president to that California, I mean, that Colorado Supreme Court uh, decision. So I think he's going to stand trial. Uh, the Supreme Court's not going to save him. Uh, and, and he will be on the ballot. 91 different indictments? Is that the tally? Well, if you include what's going on with the hush money payments in New York, yeah. uh, he's also facing the ongoing civil fraud trial. Georgia, there's the E. Jean Carroll case. Classified You're going to have to have another hour for, to, for really to dig into all of that. Right. So if your prediction plays out, this, this could be a really uh, interesting year. Get your rest in now. <laughs> David, uh, you correctly predicted uh, last year the next chairman of the Joint Chiefs. I got one right. <laughs> <laughs> What's your prediction this year? So this year, I would have to predict the discovery of alien life to compete. What? With. I'm sorry. I, no. <laughs> Excuse me. I said I would have to. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> but in order to compete with the shockers that we're going oh, to okay. <laughs> See, David, during... when you speak, everyone listens, <laughs> and I believe it's absolutely 100% true fact. So you really threw me. <laughs> you take... also, this also scares us all every year. <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> I'll take it from the top. Okay. <laughs> In order to compete with the shockers that we've got coming up in this election year, I would have to predict something like the discovery of alien life, but I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Instead, I am going to predict that North Korea's Kim Jong-un will reap the rewards of having provided 
Putin with artillery for his war in Ukraine. And those rewards will take the form of technical aid to his nuclear weapons programs. And we won't know it until we see North Korea testing new and improved weapons. And perhaps that seventh nuclear test everyone's been waiting everyone's for. Everyone's waiting for that shoe. Um, so I, you have all set the table beautifully for my conclusion, which is that the only certainty is uncertainty. And anyone who tells you what is going to happen with this election and how it's going to play out over the next year is selling you something. Mm -hmm. Because there are just so many different variables that all of us are tracking and all of us are weighing, um, which is why you need to watch CBS. But it's also why none of us will sleep very much in the next few months.